cascade of falling blossoms. <laughs> blossoms fell in a cascade, chased by a dusty cloud of voices and faces coming from life's past memories. Some blossoms rushed headlong in silent breezes, while others softly dropped into the dark yawn of gravity. I saw the blossoms in these moments as children leaving the familiarity of their motherly bows above, parachuting into the unknown to grow, bloom, and fade away. Many times over the blossoms fell with more voices and faces in the same song cycle leaving an echo after they dropped to the ground. Along with the ebb and tide of the river's edge, sun and moon, laughter and sorrow, triumph and defeat, love and hate, youth and old age, the song cycle continued to unwind until there was nowhere else for it to go but to rewind its song to play again. For as long as there is a vision of those blossoms falling, life continues to play that song cycle of birth and rebirth to the point where all that there is shall be the unbroken transformation of being. From one transformation to the next, there is the remembering of voices and faces in a dusty cloud chasing the cascade of falling blossoms. Beautiful. Um, I wrote this poem because I, I really can't stand this kind of summer heat. Hello. <laughs> it's called Rain. Descending from changeable sky, rain soaked me thoroughly. Not one, two, or three drops came, but zillions of them in a downpour. All that water fell from the silence and emptiness of the tranquility above and dropped its weight onto the world of emotion, sounds, smells, and ceaseless movement. Isn't it somehow miraculous that once there was no rain at all, and now there is only rain? My consciousness could no longer stay where it was in the deluge, but changed all on its own and in its own time. Once I was dry and solid, now I have become the liquid nature of rain. I felt all my cares wash away in the soil where my feet used to be. Rain carried me away from a static sense of reality and poured me back into the earth to fulfill some other destiny. The train ride. On bands of steel ribbons laid out along the edge of coastline, a train surged ahead. Images of towns blurred quickly from one end of the window to the other in impatient technicolor, in a kind of time-lapse sort of frame view of the world by my side. Pointed rooftops playfully darted in and out of leafy green scenery with mottled sunlight dancing with the clickety-clack rhythmic soundtrack of the trains under carriage. Passengers sat in their seats while rushing streams of thought poured out of their babbling brook mouths. Sounds of pens scribbling scratchy answers to crossword puzzles and the utterances of muzzled and not so muzzled cell phone conversations, often exploding in jisms of laughter and jagged eruptions of annoyance. An invisible bell tolled, interrupting the serenity of the rail car's interior, announcing in the tone of the disembodied and bored voice of the conductor the comings and goings of station names. At the end of the line, an ominous slowing down in a gentle G-force whisper before the train reverently slipped into the last station, a station 
the name of which was not uttered. A wet blanket of an anticlimax blotted out the sun, and all manner of sound. The film footage of the world racing from edge to edge on my window became a blank space. No more passenger sounds to be heard. Where did they go? As the train stopped, the movement of life seemed to stop. Only silence remained. I surrendered to the order of the universe around me and sadly realized it was over. My desires told me, I want another train ride. I want to see more from that window. I want the journey to never end. Thank you.